Hope you all had a uh, good lunch and are ready for an hour of uh, a deep dive on best practices for our architecting hybrid cloud security. Uh, my name is Stein. I'm a technical product manager for VMware's network and security business unit. And with me here is Amir. Um, and in the session today, we're going to focus on the integration between Checkpoint and NSX. Um, and of course, we're mainly going to focus on the NSX <coughs> integration. Who here of you has already deployed NSX? Good, so that's almost half of the room. Any NSX T deployments? A couple, yeah. And are any of you who are deployed with NSX V waiting for service insertion, waiting for the integration with Checkpoint on NSX T so you can move over to T? Yeah, okay, uh, cool. maybe, maybe a few. Okay. Because um, I know a lot of our customers were waiting for that. So, you know, that's what we're going to be talking about today. We're going to be doing a demo as well and, and really show how closely Checkpoint integrates with NSX, both NSX V as well as NSX T for both the north south and east west use case. So, with that, Amir, I'll hand it off to you. Thank you. So, uh, hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Amir Kaushansky, um, and I'm the head of uh, uh, cloud network security at the Checkpoint. Um, and I'm, I've been doing uh, cybersecurity for the past 20 years, uh, both on the defensive side and the, on the offensive side. And when I started, when I uh, started this journey and I talked with people about cybersecurity and they asked me, what are you doing? I had to explain to them what is cybersecurity, and they were looking at me quite awkward uh, because you know they thought that it's science fiction. Uh, but uh, today we know that cybersecurity is one of the main uh, uh, main things. Uh, um, we see it in, in the newspapers uh, every day. Uh, there are breaches, uh, and, and and it concerns us all. And oh, forgot the disclaimer. Never mind. Okay. <laughs> um, and, and it's not surprised that even the World uh, Economic uh, uh, Forum that meets once a year in uh, Davos for the second year in a row stated that cybersecurity is one of the top five uh, risks uh, for uh, all of us. So a little bit about Checkpoint. Uh, Checkpoint, who, who knows, who doesn't know what, who's, uh, uh, Checkpoint, what Checkpoint does? Okay, cool. So uh, uh, Checkpoint is uh, a company that started 25 years ago. Uh, we actually invent invented the Stateful Firewall 25 years ago. Uh, we, are, uh, we have uh, uh, more than 100,000 customers. Uh, we have a lot of patents in the uh, area of security. Um, and we are about 5,000 employees uh, worldwide. And during the past... 25 years, we got a lot of uh, recognition on uh, our technologies. Uh, just to name a few, we are uh, in the uh, security magic quadrant for uh, 19, uh, 19 years. Uh, we got the uh, best prevention score in NSS, in N NSS uh, report recently. Uh, I think that the last one was released in August, at the beginning of August, and we got 100%. I had to check myself, but yeah, we got 100%, while other vendors got uh, uh, way less. Um, and I want to share with you a little bit what, what is our secret sauce, what makes our technology uh, um, so uh, great. And the first thing is prevention. Okay, we don't have in our lexicon the word the world, the detection. We uh, always try to prevent uh, breaches. Because today, in, in, in the attack landscape, um, detecting is too late. I mean, look at uh, ransomware, for example. Um, if you're detecting ransomware, it doesn't have a real value, right? Your, your, probably your users will call you uh, to tell you that they were uh, in infected or attacked by a ransomware uh, way before you will, you will uh, uh, notice it in your SIM or in any other detection capabilities. So it must be prevention. The second thing is that we are trying um, to give solutions for tomorrow's cybersecurity attacks. 
And we have this notion that we are pushing in the market. It's called Gen 5, not Gen V. Um, and the basic idea is that uh, the, if you look at cybersecurity, it's a, it's a cat and mouse game. Okay? The, the attackers, they come with the technology, with the ability, with the knowledge how to attack your organizations. And then we, the defenders, we learn about it. We come with solutions. Um, and they are not sitting. Okay? They, they learn this, these solutions, and they learn how to evade these solutions, and they learn how to create new technology. And, and this is what you see here. You see that the, the, the attack vectors, they change during the years. And the sad thing about it is uh, when we ran a survey, we saw that a lot of people a lot of customers, enterprise customers, they think that you know, if they have a network security, a firewall, or an IPS, they are secure from today's problems or today's challenges. And this is not the case. So we are trying, uh, and we have a huge research team. We, we, we constantly learn uh, what's the new trends uh, um, in, in, in cybersecurity, and we create solutions uh, for these challenges. The last thing that I want to share with you, um, it, which is part of our secret sauce, is if you look at the ecosystem during the past years, you can see that the number of threat vectors uh, grew dramatically, but also the number of vendors. Okay. Um, and, and it's, it's quite challenging because we know that today uh, one of the problems that we have as an industry is good personnel. Um, we all lack uh, good personnel, good cybersecurity practitioners. Um, and most of, of the customers I meet, they have a huge security stack, more than, more than 30 vendors. And it's really hard to manage that with uh, um, with so little personnel. And these solutions, the, the solutions that, that, that they buy, that you buy in your security stack, they're not cooperating with each other. And this is, this is also a, a problem because they're not sharing this intelligence between uh, the products. And we came with, with um, an architecture called Infinity. And the idea with Infinity is that we are giving you uh, security solutions for all your enterprise environment, for endpoint, for cloud, for uh, network, and for mobile. And everything is sending, uh, uh, sending queries and intelligence through something which we call threat cloud. It's, think about it um, like a huge intelligence, huge fusion center that gets all this data, uh, get feeds from third party engines, get feeds from our research team, um, and shares it among all the other products. So imagine if, if uh, uh, you're sitting in, in uh, uh, San Francisco and you have a gateway, and this gateway, someone is trying to attack you, and, and the gateway sends an indication to the threat cloud, and the threat cloud identified this specific attack, he will immediately share this information with all the gateways in the world. And as I stated before, we have more than 100,000 customers. And, and I'm sitting in Israel, and I will enjoy from this feed. Because if someone will try to hack me using the same technique, he will not be able to do that. And this is very powerful. And everything we do, we do with a single pane of glass. It's a central management, really, really easy to use. And just to share with you some numbers, um, so I, I said that we have more than 100,000 customers. All their uh, sensors are se sending data to the threat cloud. We get 86 billion transactions per day in the threat cloud. We emulate, and we'll talk about emulation later on, we emulate 4 million files per day. And out of these 4 million files, we find 7,000 files, which are zero-day files, meaning that these files, if you run antivirus on these files, it, it will not be able to recognize that it's a malware. 
But we were able to find out that this is indeed a malware, and we blocked the attacks for our customers. So we talked about the entire ecosystem, mobile, endpoint, uh, uh, etc. But I want to drill down in what we're doing in the cloud, because at the end of the day, we are all uh, um, we're here. We're all uh, um, interested in the cloud. So when we talk about cloud security, we have uh, um, we have a brand called CloudGuard, and CloudGuard has three uh, members. One is a uh, logic, and the idea behind logic is that you, we take the actual flows, actual network flows from your cloud, um, we give it context, okay? Because things in the cloud are very dynamic. Uh, when you look at the log and it gives you an IP address, 1.1.1.1, um, it can belong at a certain point to a Lambda function, but then a second after it can belong to a container. And, and the meaning of this connection changes when it's a lambda function or container, right? So we give this context to the logs, we enrich them, we send them to our threat cloud to find out if it communicates with anything malicious, plus we run a threat hunting on top of it, um, and this is logic. Uh, we purchased a company called Dom9, so CloudGuard Dom9 comes uh, from there. Um, and what we're doing there is uh, um, compliance and governance for public cloud. So uh, things like, I don't want to have S3 buckets which are open to the world because someone will hack me. Um, capital One. But um, so, so things like that cannot happen because you have tools like DOM9 that, that, that you configure them and say, I don't want to have this in my organization, and, we, and, and if someone opens an S3 bucket to the world, we identify it and we close it immediately. So this is a CloudGuard Dome 9. And the topic of this specific session is CloudGuard IaaS, um, and we're going to talk about it. Yes. Yes. So uh, CloudGuard IaaS, um, it's an advanced threat prevention appliance. Um, it's a next generation firewall. We will talk about all these buzzwords in a second. Um, it, it, it tries to be as native as it can be in the cloud. So we, we give, uh, uh, in public cloud, for example, we do auto scaling. Um, we also connect to the actual, actual um, capabilities of cloud vendors in things like uh, transit gateway or transit, uh, um, transit VPC. Uh, we provide micro segmentation and uh, uh, um, macro segmentation in some cases. And we have a notion of uh, adaptive policy. And the idea with adaptive policy, uh, as I mentioned before, cloud is very, very dynamic. And creating a rule base which is based on IP addresses or subnets makes no sense. The only way that you can create reasonable security in the cloud is by using tags or labels, which are consumed from the cloud inventories, and we will talk about it later on, what we're doing with NS6. And the idea is that when something changes in the cloud, we learn it, we notify the gateways, and uh, you don't need to push policy because we, we, we do it dynamically. It has another value. The value is that your development team and you, the security team, they can talk the same language. Uh, so when, when someone from the application team calls and says, hey, I have a problem, I don't have access from my VM, you don't ask the IP address of the VM, you just ask what is the label. It's a web VM, okay. I can understand what is the policy around it. And you can see we have a lot of vendors that we are, uh, cloud vendors that we are integrating with, uh, Azure, uh, AWS, and uh, Google for sure, and uh, VMware. And with VMware, we're doing it for many years. Uh, we, in a, we are in a very, very uh, strong uh, relations and uh, partnership. Uh, we were the first vendor, first security vendor that uh, did the um, north-south uh, uh, insertion in uh, NSXT version 2.3, uh, 
and we were the first one that did the service insertion in, in 2.5, in 2.4, yep. uh, and we are now in the final stages of uh, certifying our gateway on uh, 2.5, and it's beyond beyond uh, uh, NS6. The relationship is beyond NS6. Uh, yesterday we launched a new product. It's uh, called CloudGuard Connect. Uh, the idea is that uh, we are giving security gateway as a service to our customers, so they will be able to take their branch offices and, and, and get an enterprise uh, uh, level security in their branch offices. And the product is, and, and, and it's integrated with uh, uh, VMware uh, VeloCloud uh, SD1, SD1 solution. It's very easy to, uh, to deploy uh, our gateway there. Um, and the idea is that it, it is uh, uh, two pieces. One piece is it's the edge, and the other one is the cloud. And you can see that uh, we, we are in, uh, in, 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 in deep integration there as well. Now, I use the, the, the word service insertion qu quite a bit, and now Stein will explain what it is. Yep, thanks, Amir. And, and also, you know, one additional thing when it comes to integration, you know, we have a lot of customers that are currently using NSX for vSphere. Um, at the same time, we also have NSX-T now. Um, but a lot of these customers that use NSX for vSphere use our service insertion with Checkpoint. Some of our largest customers use that in order to be able to add on additional security controls that are not native to NSX. You know, that said, if you uh, attended the keynote yesterday, you may have heard of, um, you know, some big announcements around NSXV, yeah, sorry, NSXT. We announced NSX Intelligence, for example, which is our distributed analytics platform. Uh, I'll talk a little bit about that. But our vision with NSXT is to be able to provide ubiquitous enforcement based on application context, distributed at cloud scale, and baked directly into the architecture. So that's our security vision. The key use case key security use case with NSXT is micro-segmentation. And what micro-segmentation is, is the ability to provide or to enable zero trust, a zero trust networking model for our customers across the hybrid data center. Um, kind of going back to this previous slide here. So NSXT, the key components are the distributed firewall. The distributed firewall sits at the vNIC of every single virtual machine. Not just a virtual machine. It sits at the VNIC of a virtual machine. It sits at a container interface. It can also be deployed on a bare metal server in order to micro-segment bare metal to bare metal communication. With the latest release of NSXT, which is 2.4, we support layer 2 to layer 4 firewalling, or to layer 7 firewalling on that distributed firewall. That means that you can create a policy that is support independent and is based on a certain application. You can, for example, make sure that you only allow uh, TLS version 1.2 in your PCI compliance zone. So that's what we're doing uh, from a native security point of view on the distributed firewall. Uh, in the upcoming 2.5 release, which was announced yesterday and which is coming out in a couple of days, we're also bringing that layer 7 app ID functionality to the perimeter. So for intertenant filtering or for your SDDC perimeter. Now, uh, two other major announcements, or two other major features that came into NSXT 2.3, in which Checkpoint was our first partner, and NSXT 2.4 are service insertion. So in 2.3, we introduced what we call north to south server insertion. In 2.4, we introduced east to west server insertion, which is applied to the distributed firewall. So, um, you know, our key security functionality into NSXT, there's the internal firewall, the gateway firewall, and then there's ven vendor integration. On top of that, we now have NSX Intelligence. And NSX Intelligence is our distributed analytics and visibility platform, which we just announced and is coming out in the 2.5 release in a, a couple of days from now. And the goal with NSX Intelligence is to help customers get visibility across their entire environment. And we don't do that based on NetFlow. We're not sending NetFlow from every single workload to a centralized platform. Instead, we're using our distributed architecture. We're using our same distributed firewall that sits at the VNIC of every virtual machine to send metadata to the NSX intelligence platform in order to help you to visualize what's going on in your environment. And even more importantly, in order for you to help micro-segment, in order for you to help create that micro-segmentation zero-trust policy. So that's NSX Intelligence coming out in a couple of days. It's part of NSX. It is not a separate product. Uh, and all configuration that you do for NSX Intelligence is done from the same NSX manager. 
Um, NSX Manager is also a clustered appliance as of the 2.4 release. And um, we've simplified our UI. We're also providing a declarative policy model. That means that your entire security policy, but also your network requirements, uh, do you need a load balancer? All of that can be specified in a single JSON file and with a single API call can be applied to the application that you're creating networking and security for. So that's what we call our declarative policy API. And then I mentioned already the three major um, components uh, that we have are the internal firewall, uh, or we also call it our distributed firewall. There's the gateway firewall, which provides perimeter security, and then there is serve, uh, vendor integration or server insertion. And the goal with vendor integration is to be able to insert additional security controls. And you know, Amir mentioned all of the rich security controls that come with checkpoint. You know, IPS, for example, you know, threat prevention, URL filtering, um, a whole lot more. We don't do those natively into the NSX product. So that's why we provide this functionality for customers to, gra gra to, to granularly insert these vendor security controls. Uh, when talking about server insertion, um, there's two different ways that we can do service insertion in NSXT. Uh, one of them is called East to West server insertion. And you know, for the customers that were raising their hand when I talked about, uh, when I asked about the NSXT deployments, um, that is that, NSX, that East to West server insertion model is the same model that we had in NSX for vSphere. So this is basically at the same place where we have our distributed firewall. At the VNIC of every workload, we can intercept traffic and redirect that traffic to a checkpoint Cloud Guard appliance. Um, so, you know, what kind of services do, do customers typically insert into the data center? Next generation firewalls, IPS solutions, and also visibility and analytic solutions. Um, now, for east to west server insertion in NSX V, um, the deployment model was fairly um, static in the sense that you have to deploy a checkpoint Cloud Guard appliance on every single host in a cluster that you need to use service insertion on. In T, the model is a lot more flexible. We still have that option. You deploy the checkpoint next generation firewall on every single host in a cluster. Or what we also support now is called a, um, a centralized cluster model. In that model, we're going to redirect traffic from the host across the overlay to your next generation firewall checkpoint Cloud Guard appliance. So that's the cluster-based deployment. And this enables a lot more flexibility for you to choose which traffic should be redirected. And you know, frankly, it also allows, it's going to enable you to do server insertion at lower cost, because you don't have to provide a license for all of these different service VMs that you otherwise have to deploy on every single host. Now, you know, I talked about redirection. It's very important to understand that what we do with server insertion is not just redirection. We provide deep integration with partners. And um, you know, Amir mentioned earlier, too, as well, that um, creating a policy that, that is based on IP addresses really doesn't work anymore for modern applications. Um, and if you do that, then you're going to get a huge firewall rule set that is just always going to keep expanding. Instead, what you need is you need a policy that is dynamic and is based on the application. Um, so we do that natively in NSX by a concept called security groups and security tags. A security tag can be deployed or can be applied to a workload to signify, for example, that a particular workload needs to meet PCI compliance or to indicate that a workload is an Apache virtual machine or is deployed in production or development. Um, as a result of that, a workload becomes a member of a security group, and we share that security group information also with Checkpoint. So then on the Checkpoint policy, you can also create um, a write a firewall rule that is using those dynamic security groups. When a new application is spun up, those new workloads that match those security tags will automatically be added to those security groups. So it doesn't require any change to your policy. At the same time, when you're decommissioning an application, the tags are removed, and those IP addresses are automatically removed from the data plane policy without you having to touch your management plane. So this is a really key, important concept as, as well. Now, with server insertion, we also simplify provisioning. We can automatically deploy the Cloud Guard appliance in your network and automatically plumb, automatically do the wiring between the Cloud Guard appliance and the NSX components. So ubiquitous application-based policies is what I just mentioned. This allows you to create policies that are based on dynamic security groups on the checkpoint appliance, as well as you do natively on NSX. And then flexible and scalable service chaining. This is new in NSXT. This is the ability to insert multiple services. 
um, you know, for certain compliance zones in, in your environment. You may not just need um, a next generation firewall, but you may also need a network analysis device. So we have the option to specify surface chains in which you define all of your requirements, next gen firewall plus network monitoring, and then selectively redirect traffic to that particular surface chain. Um, the surface consumption workflow, this is the same for or north, south, and east to west server insertion. When you use the product, the first thing you're gonna do is from the checkpoint uh, manager, basically, you're gonna register a checkpoint appliance with NSX manager. Uh, then you create surface definitions that define what particular set of rules need to be applied. Where is the OVA of the, uh, of the virtual machine, the checkpoint virtual machine that will need to be deployed? That's what we call the surface registration. Next step is surface deployment. That is driven from NSX. And this is where you actually use NSX to deploy that checkpoint appliance either on a cluster, a remote cluster, or you can deploy it locally on every single compute node. Surface application uh, means that you create your redirection roles to steer traffic to checkpoint. And you can be very selective in that. So you can say that only traffic into my PCI environment needs to be redirected to checkpoint. For all the other traffic in my environment, I use the native NSX security controls. And in surface consumption, this, for that we go back to the checkpoint manager, and this is where you write your policy on the checkpoint appliance. Um, so, you know, the key use cases for surface insertion um, on the security side is inline advanced security controls. I mentioned these already, you know, the ability to insert a next generation firewall, an IPS solution, not just for virtual machines, not just for traffic between virtual machines, but also traffic between containers, traffic, um, you know, between a container and a virtual machine, uh, or traffic um, in the cloud, or also traffic from uh, a bare metal solution to the cloud, for example. Um, and the other main use case is uh, really visibility, so network monitoring, network aggregation, analytics uh, solutions can also be integrated as part of a surface chain, and we have the option to not redirect traffic to those surfaces, but instead send a copy of the packets so that those solutions can provide analysis. And really briefly here, the two modes of surface insertion that we have in NSXT, first of all, north to south surface insertion, this is enhanced perimeter security control. So this is applied to the uplink of a logical router. And for those of you who are familiar with NSX, this is the same as where the gateway firewall sits, our own gateway firewall, which does layer three to layer seven firewalling. In addition, you can apply service insertion to selectively redirect traffic to a next generation firewall, an IPS, or you know, whatever security solution that is. North to South surface insertion was not available for NSX for vSphere. So this is brand new, only available for NSX T. And then the other security use case is east to west security uh, or service insertion. So with east to west service insertion, we basically insert the uh, partner service, the checkpoint service, uh, right at the VNIC of every workload, um, you know, a virtual machine uh, or a container. And that allows us to intercept all the traffic to and from that workload. Uh, you know, so the main use cases for this, of course, protecting intra-VM communication, connecting, protecting communication between containers, um, I mentioned before that we support a, a two different deployment models, a per host deployment in which you deploy the checkpoint appliance on every single compute node, or a cluster deployment in which you deploy it on a remote cluster, and we then use the overlay to steer the traffic to the checkpoint appliance. Uh, surface chaining is new in NSXT as well. We did not really have that option in NSX for vSphere. Um, multi vCenter support, this is a, an important point as well is in NSXT, for those of you who are familiar with T, is we've completely decoupled from vCenter. In NSXV, um, all of your UI input is done through vCenter. And there's a one-to-one -one mapping between vCenter and NSXT manager. In T, we've decoupled from that. And in T, you can actually add up to 16 vCenters into a single NSXT manager. That also means for your service insertion policy, uh, your integration with, with Checkpoint, that single policy can span across these 16 vCenters. We also support vMotion of a guest. So if a VM, a guest VM vMotions, what we will do is we will basically pin all the flows from that guest VM to one of two particular checkpoint appliance to make sure that we provide full, stateful traffic analysis even during that vMotion of that virtual machine. Uh, we also provide load balancing across surface instances. You know, if you have a lot of traffic in your environment and you need to deploy multiple checkpoint appliances in order to be able to handle that traffic, we will load balance all of those flows across however many checkpoint appliances that you are deploying. 
And then we support standards-based pa pa packet delivery. Um, if you're familiar with how we, we do service insertion in NSXV, we're basically using a shared memory channel. We call it the VMCI channel. In order to deliver packets from the distributed firewall to the partner appliance. In NSXT, we have a more flexible model. We're using a standards-based protocol called NSH, Network Service Header, to do that packet delivery. Um, one of the benefits of doing that is it makes it a whole lot easier for our partners to integrate with us. OK, and uh, with that, I'll hand it back over to you, Amir. Thank you. So basically, we, we see, uh, when we talk with customers, we see that uh, we bring three main values uh, over uh, NS6. Uh, the, the first one is security. Um, we give advanced threat prevention, and I will, I will share with you what, what exactly I mean in the next slide. So we, we bring advanced threat prevention into the uh, data center. The second thing is automation. It's automation of the policy and automation of the deployment itself. Um, and the third one is uh, unified uh, management, not only for your NS6 environment, but also for other clouds that you might be uh, using. When I, when, I talk, when, when we talk about advanced threat prevention, what does it really mean? So basically, um, we have a lot of engines, a lot of blades in our uh, solution. And, and I will share with you a, a small, small examples and explanation on each uh, uh, blade. The first one is firewall. Um, ooh. Did I say something racist? <laughs> OK. So th the first one is firewall. Uh, and, and this is the, the basic uh, blade. It's uh, the basic technology that, uh, that we've been doing for 25 years now. Uh, the second one is the application control. We have hundreds of applications in our database, and it's also uh, customizable. So you can, if you have a business application and you want to create uh, an inspector of, uh, inspection uh, module for that, you can do that uh, with uh, our software. Uh, we have the ability to do URL filtering. Basically, it's uh, the notion of taking a URL, uh, matching it ac across a database, and giving it a context, for example, that BBC is news and Pornhub is porn, and then you can create a policy around that. Um, we have IPS. IPS uh, looks at the data and, and, and matches uh, and known vulnerabilities uh, through uh, signatures. So, for example, Apache Strouds um, that, that took Equinox, uh, Equinox breach. Uh, we created the signature for that, and if someone is trying to hack your Apache uh, using uh, um, this technique, we, we are going to prevent it. And we have thousands of signatures in our IPS blade. We have Antibot. Antibot, um, it, it, it's a blade that uh, if you have a bot in your environment, it communicates with, with the hacker on the other side, with the attacker on the other side. We identify it through uh, many techniques, and we block it. Context-aware is all about files. Uh, we give you the ability to create policy and say this workload doesn't need to upload or download files, or this workload can upload file or download files and the type of files that it can get. And antivirus. Um, it's a network-based antivirus. And these blades, the blades that I manage now, are in our basic offering. Okay, this is the basic offering. Um, and then the advanced offering, we call it, uh, um, the, the first package is advanced threat prevention. The second package is advanced threat prevention with Sandblast. It has two blades. One is threat extraction and one is threat emulation. I talked about emulation before. We have a, um, a, a patented te technology uh, to get files and detonate them in a sandbox. Uh, we, we do something which is really uh, different from other sandbox because we look at the CPU level rather than just the processes. Um, and then threat emulation. The idea with threat emulation is that, uh, let's say that um, you have an application, uh, uh, HR application that gets CVs from, from, from anyone, and I know about it, and I'm, I'm you know, the bad hacker, uh, and I, have, I know uh, um, I'm... I'm I have zero day for uh, Word documents, so I, I create my attack vector around uh, this 
a specific technology and I, I put my file, my Word document uh, in your uh, application knowing that someone will open it and I will get my, uh, my, my foot in the door in, into your organization. So what we do in threat emulation, we change the Word document to PDF and then we destroy the, 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 first, uh, uh, the first thing in the attack vector that I was planning uh, to use. And so this is the second, uh, the second uh, uh, package, these two blades. And, and often I hear people, when, when, they, talk to, when they talk about uh, appliances, they say, I need a firewall or I don't need a firewall. And I, I'm kind of allergic to this discussion because as you can see, firewall is merely a simple blade in, in, in a lot of technology which is way, way more than, than, than just a simple firewall. And the firewall is, is basically a technology that you know, worked uh, or is essential, but you need much more for the attacks that, that are happening today in the wild. And when we talk about NS6 and the integration with NS6, uh, basically we see with our customers that, that there are two ways that they deploy it. One is that uh, they create uh, NS6. In NS6, they create a redirection rule which we will show you in a second, and it, it sends all the traffic to us, and they manage all the policy through us, um, and they manage all the advanced threat prevention uh, uh, through us. And in, in other cases, customers are saying, you know, I have this uh, replication service, which I don't really need advanced threat prevention there, so they create Rule, rules in the, uh, in the DFW, the NS6 DFW, and then they forward relevant uh, traffic uh, to us. Um, and Stein mentioned uh, this before. Uh, it's the, the, the different service insertion types, so it's kind of a summary in uh, one, uh, uh, one slide. Uh, we talked about the north-south, so the ability to put cl cloud guard in uh, different uh, uh, routers, and then uh, in NS6 T, they added the service cluster option uh, versus in, in east-west versus the um, on-host insertion that was in NS6 V, uh, which is also supported in NS6 2.5. Um, and basically, we support everything. Um, here, if you ask me what should they do, should they do service cluster or on-host, it's a question of price performance. Okay, so basically, uh, this probably will be easier to manage, but it will have some performance cost. Uh, and this one uh, will be faster, but it probably has some maintenance cost. Now, we, we talked about insertion, insertion, so let's see how it is really done. Um, uh, I don't see where I, okay, it's running. Yep, it is. No, I don't. It oh. was running, yeah. Shh. Okay. Move the mouse and see, do you see the... Uh... Okay. Yeah. Okay, so basically from our management, I told you we have a central management. From our management, we run a command line tool uh, that basically what it does, uh, it, it takes the OVF file, the, uh, the file that has uh, uh, the cloud guard, um, and it registers it in our management as well as uh, in NS6, so it does it uh, for you automatically. So here we're, we're copying the, uh, the file. And the actual deployment is going to be done by NSX. So NSX needs to know where the OVA for CloudGuard is located. And this is what we're doing now. We're basically going to tell NSX what to deploy, what does the service look like, where is the OVA located, what kind of functionalities does the service, does CloudGuard offer. Yeah. And, and we, we had a stage there where, where we are creating a secure communication between the management and the gateway. Um, this is one of the important things that we do. Uh, we make sure that the communication is uh, very secure. And then from that point, um, what you do is you go to the NS6 uh, manager um, and, and you run everything from there. 
Yep. So on Linux X Manager, we have a surface catalog where all the different surfaces that have registered show up. So you know, now we're going to go to deployment. We select a CloudGuard deployment service. And we can select, um, we can give it a name. Then we can also select um, which logical router do we want to attach this service to. You know, if we're doing north to south service insertion, or if we're doing east to west, we can select where do we want to deploy the service as well. You know, we can check the on-host mode, or we can choose the, um, the, per the cluster mode. We also need to configure an IP pool. This is sort of the management interface on the cloud guard. Um, so select that IP address here, select the network interface that our management will be, will be connecting to. Select our overlay, because we will be sending all the traffic across an overlay between the logical router and the checkpoint cloud guard. And then we can choose the number of, uh, the number of checkpoint cloud guards that we want to deploy. So this is really that flexibility that we get. If you need to redirect a lot of traffic, you can choose to deploy multiple cloud guard appliances. Um, we also provide load, load balancing, as I mentioned earlier, between those multiple services of the same type. And now you can see that the service is being deployed. Deployment is in progress. Um, if you would look at vCenter now, you would see that we're actually using the vCenter API to do that OVA deployment. Once the deployment has been done, the next thing that we need to do here is create a service profile. And a service profile really just represents a particular surface. In this case, it represents CloudGuard. You need that surface profile because the next step is creating a surface chain. This is where you can chain multiple surfaces after each other. So you could do a checkpoint, and you know, if you want to do defense in depth, you could add on another security device as well or a network monitoring device. And inside that surface chain, you add the surface profile that you created earlier. Now you can choose your failure policy. Uh, do I want to do fail open or fail closed? Allow or block when the surface fails. And then the final step is creating your redirection rules. So here we specify what traffic do we want to redirect. And there's a lot of granularity here. So the same security groups that you use on NSX, you can use in your redirection rule to only redirect traffic, for example, from virtual machines that has a PCI tag, or only redirect traffic from virtual machines that are running Windows, because we can also determine the operating system automatically. Perhaps you want to create a quarantine policy around operating systems that are no longer supported by Microsoft. So you create that granular redirection policy. And as soon as that is done, we are now redirecting that traffic that is mapping our redirection policy here to our service chain. In this case, in our demo, we're just um, applying the uh, CloudGuard service in our service chain, but we could, on, get, could add on additional services as well. And uh, that's the part of the NSX configuration. Your next step would be to go to the actual CloudGuard manager, the checkpoint manager, and configure your firewall rules on checkpoint using these NSX tags, these NSX security and, groups. Yeah, and we'll talk about it in a second. So let's talk about, uh, about what, what actually you can do with the product. So what, one of the things uh, that I urge you to do is if you don't have experience with the product, you can download it and you can use it. It's 15 days uh, free. It can run in, I, in detection mode. Uh, so again, I'm not, I'm not telling you to run it in detection mode. I'm telling you that you can try it and see the, if you gain any value uh, and then move to prevention mode. Uh, but go, deploy it, play with it, see that it suits uh, your need, and then move to prevention mode. We talked about uh, the ability to create a policy which is based on tags. Uh, we do it through our CloudGuard controller. CloudGuard controller is something that is running on our central management. It connects to a lot of inventories. Uh, you can see here examples of inventories that we are connected to. Um, it connects to AWS and Azure, and it allows you to create policy which is cross-cloud, um, and, and it matches the, uh, these tags, and it get notified if some, something changes, and, and it does the IP allocations, and notifies the gateway of any, in, in, in any change. So the only thing you need to do is to create this logical policy, and we do the rest for you. And when we're talking about VMware, and, and as I said before, we have a, a, a lot of integration points with VMware. So in N6V, uh, we, we did the, uh, the and, and, and actually you can manage with the same manager, you can manage uh, uh, N6T and N6V at, at, at the same manager. You don't need to move uh, to, a, to a different manager, and you, you can use the same rules. You can, you can take the same object and use the same uh, tags. 
in, in the policy. So here it's an example of uh, a global uh, security, uh, security groups. Um, it's uh, a, a feature that uh, NSXV had. Uh, and, and even if you don't have NS6 and you're using vCenter, we take objects from vCenter as well and we allow you to use it uh, in your policy. When we talk about cloud, a lot of people are moving to infrastructure as code. People do not like, you know, it's not like uh, appliances where you need to run with the appliance and plumb it to the network and connect. So people really like to deploy things with code. And we support Ansible and Terraform, but we also support VR, Virealize. So we have, uh, we have uh, I, and, and I can give you an example, we have a huge pharmaceutical company, and what they did uh, basically uh, is that they created an internal portal, and the application owners, they can come to this portal before they want to publish an application, they fill the form, and immediately it creates the VMs it, cre it gives them, it assigns them the right labels, um, and it creates the policy. It, it creates the gateway, the CloudGuard gateway, and it creates the policy, and everything is done automatically. So you don't need to run, uh, you don't need to run and plug everything and open and open tickets, and everything is done automatically from a portal, and this is very, very powerful. Another integration point where we have with VMware is the ability to quarantine VMs. The basic idea is that we find a VM which has a, a, a malware on it, and basically what we do, we assign a quarantine tag on it, uh, the framework, the, the infrastructure, the SDN, will not pass uh, uh, packets to this VM until it will be remediated and this tag will be removed. We know that in cloud, one of the most important parts is uh, availability. So one of the things that we are doing uh, is blue-green upgrade. It's the ability for you to be able to upgrade your CloudGuard gateways without the need to remove uh, any service. Basically, the way you do it is you run a simple CLI. It brings the new version. You run some sanity. You see that it's working that it's not, you know, it's not doing anything uh, uh, wrong, you run some connections uh, on it, and then you remove the old version. Uh, we, t we talked a little bit about uh, the different types of network insertion, so here I'm showing um, an, an example of uh, anti-bot, anti-bot uh, blade. Uh, so you can see here that there is a bot on a VM, and when it tries to communicate with the uh, with the hacker, uh, on, uh, it gets blocks in the first north-south uh, north -south gateway. Basically, we don't, we don't care if it's a VM there, if it's uh, uh, Kubernetes, if it's PKS. Uh, you can run north-south advanced threat prevention on, on these environments. And when we're talking about east-west, it's the, the same example. Here, I'm, I'm showing service cluster. Uh, the web tier is trying to do SQL injection, and basically we block it in, uh, in the CloudGuard gateway. Now, here you should have said, you know, this is for your disclaimer. Uh, so PKS is something that we are working on. Uh, it, it was just released in version 2.5. We, we, we are heavily investing in containers. We believe that Kubernetes um, is the a most dominant uh, orchestrator, and we, 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 we think that containers uh, will be, uh, who's using containers, by the way, here in the crowd? Yeah, so we, we think that containers de is definitely the, the way to go. We support today, and you can read it in Checkpoint's blog, I wrote a blog about it uh, a few months ago. We support north-south north -south, uh, advanced threat prevention in Kubernetes. Same capabilities can be applied here. And we are going to release a lot of different offerings around Kubernetes. Uh, to name a few, uh, compliance and, and, and network flow analysis and, 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 and vulnerability assessment, et cetera. So, so we are going to do a lot of things around that. And one of the things that we are testing with VMware is the ability uh, to run to, to secure PKS with, with Kubernetes awareness 
with the ability to uh, run security on, on, on the pod level. So this is something that we are working on. And another interesting uh, aspect is all these hybrid environments, right? You have VMC, you have NS6 on-prem, you have NS6V on-prem, uh, and you want everything to be connected securely. So you are able to create VPN, uh, as, which is very secure communication between uh, all these different environments, plus uh, to create a policy, a simple policy that is based on the inventory that you get from all these clouds. So just to summarize this session, we don't have a lot of time and I want to leave uh, uh, time for questions if you have. Uh, so just to summarize it, we basically, what we give, Checkpoint gives uh, above NS6 is um, security, advanced security, security that is suitable for the, uh, uh, the attacks that are happening today and will happen tomorrow. The second thing is uh, automation and, and, and dynamic automation in the way that we uh, deploy the service plus the way that uh, you construct the policy. And everything is done from a unified uh, management or a, a unified management for all your, your environments, not only uh, for NS6. We have a booth, you can see a demo. <laughs> Um, it's it's a uh, number uh, 1527. Did you get, did you, you, do you know where it is? Berlin. What? Yes, you can get a bottle of milk. No, I'm kidding. So it's, uh, it's yeah, it's uh, Checkpoint Charlie. So we are Checkpoint, Checkpoint Charlie in Berlin. Um, so please fill, uh, fill a survey, right? I need to tell. To, to, to tell them to do that? Yes, we do. Okay. Yeah, yeah. You can do it through your app. You've probably done it already a couple of times because you know, yeah. it's not day one anymore. Um, so any questions? There's a microphone, but it's you know, a small enough room. We can yeah. probably, you can probably just ask it from, uh, from there. If anyone is interested in, in uh, learning a bit more about the architecture of how we do server insertion, I'm presenting another session in half an hour. Uh, so you, know, you have the option to go to that as well. Um, Thank you very much. Yeah, thank you. Question.